Hi, I'm Dr. Bernardo Mendes, a veterinarian for the California Department of Food and Agriculture. As well known, <laughs> the licensed livestock meat inspectors, LMI, to maintain their license, they must attend the mandatory annual maintenance training. With this in mind, I created this bilingual livestock meat inspector, LMI, training material to assure a complete understanding of the mandatory inspection procedures of sheep and goat by all livestock meat inspectors, including Spanish speakers with limited English. This bilingual material will also facilitate the livestock meat inspector training by meat, poultry, and egg safety branch inspectors, MPS, who are not fluent in Spanish. Even though this training material is designed to address the inspection procedures of sheep and goat, it's important to remember that a licensed livestock meat inspector must maintain their knowledge of the inspection procedures and diseases of all the species of domestic livestock intended for human consumption. This includes sheep, cattle, pigs, and goats. The inspection of any domestic livestock for food purposes requires two phases, the anti-mortem inspection and the post-mortem inspection. These two sets of procedures are crucial and complement each other. The livestock's not fully inspected unless a livestock meat inspector has conducted these two steps. The anti-mortem inspection is conducted in the pen by observing the live animal, while the post-mortem inspection is carried out inside the slaughter facility after the animal has been slaughtered. Observation done during the anti-mortem inspection may identify animals with suspected conditions that may need special attention on post-mortem inspection. Anti-mortem inspection. Each individual animal must be inspected before slaughter. By observing the animals resting and moving, the LMI will notice and remove animals unfit for human consumption because of diseases and or conditions that may be difficult to detect on routine post-mortem inspection, such as nervous system disorders, rabies and tetanus, or chemical poisoning. The purpose of anti-mortem inspection is to accept for slaughter only animals capable of producing meat and meat products acceptable for use as human food. These two photos are examples of lesions found in during anti-mortem inspection. The first photo is of an external abscess in the parotid lymph node area. The second photo is of external abscess in the prefemoral lymph node area. During the anti-mortem inspection, the LMI must observe each live animal for signs of visible abnormalities, such as lumps, swellings, abscesses, tumors, arthritis, unhealed vaccination or injection, lesions, etc. The LMI must also observe any sign of shivering, trembling, incoordination, disinterest in surroundings, weakness or emaciation indicating a generalizing condition. The LMI should take note of any other unusual sign such as fast breathing, coughing, sneezing, profuse salivation, blisters or open sores, ulcers, discharge from body openings, diarrhea, stiffness, aggressive behavior, and circling, as well as inability to drink or swallow, lameness, fractures, or injuries. An animal in coma with convulsions, a downer or non-ambulatory animal unable to walk, must be addressed right away. The LMI is responsible for ensuring that all animals presented for slaughter are handled and slaughtered in a humane way following the humane slaughter regulations. 
animals must be handled in a humane manner to avoid unnecessary excitement that could lead to injury and pain. Principles of low stress restraint for sheep and goats are slow steady motion, avoiding sudden jerk movements. Sufficient pressure must be applied to provide the feeling of restraint, but excessive pressure that causes pain or discomfort must be avoided. The entrance of the restraint device must be well lighted. Livestock will remain calmer if they can see other animals. Equipment must minimize noise. High pitch noise is disturbing to livestock. Restraint devices must be designed to avoid uncomfortable pressure points on the animal's body. Non-sleep flooring for all species of animals should be provided. Captive bolt, gunshot, and electrical stunning are approved methods used in California Custom Slaughterhouse for sheep and goat. This photo shows one type of captive bolt device. This photo shows an LMI using different type of captive bolt on a properly restrained goat. The purpose of the stunning is to humanely render the livestock insensible to pain equivalent to a level of surgical anesthesia. This means that the animal must be unable to feel pain before it is stuck, bled out, shackled, and hoisted or dropped onto a table or floor. The use of humane methods in the handling and slaughter of livestock prevents needless suffering, improves the quality of the meat products, and results in safer working conditions for the California Custom Slaughterhouse Workers. In order to efficiently and humanely apply the stunning methods, the LMIs must understand the livestock's behavior to be able to carry out proper restraining and have the knowledge of the animal's anatomy to apply the stunning method correctly. Signs of a properly stunned animal. All livestock must remain insensible to pain from the time they are stunned until they are dead. The LMI must observe the following signs to verify that the animals are properly stunned. A floppy head. The head should flop like a wet rag when the hind leg kicks due to involuntary reflexes. The head should dangle from a flaccid, limp, and flexible neck. The tongue hangs straight down and out of the mouth. The back and head hang straight down. Ignore limb movements for all methods of stunning. Look at the head. The eyelids should be wide open and the pupils fully dilated. There is no vocalization. Ritualistic slaughter is the slaughter done according to the ritual requirements of any religious faith. With this method of slaughter, the animal suffers loss of consciousness by anemia of the brain caused by the simultaneous and instantaneous severs of the carotid arteries with a sharp knife. The animal is slaughtered without being stunned. Examples of ritualistic slaughter include Jewish kosher slaughter and Islamic halal slaughter. From the animal welfare standpoint, a major concern during ritualistic slaughter is the adequate methods of restraint and a properly trained LMI. Post-mortem inspection 
is an inspection of the carcass and internal organs to determine if they can be used for human food. It takes place after the anti-mort inspection and after the animal has been slaughtered. The term post-mortem means after death in Latin. The purpose of the post-mort inspection is to protect the public health by ensuring that carcass and parts that pass inspection are wholesome and not adulterated. In performing post-mortem inspections, the LMI will take regulatory decisions, document fines, and take corrective actions when necessary. Lymph nodes. The routine post-mortem inspection of the lymph nodes on sheep and goats is done by palpation and observation. Occasionally, incision and inspection of additional lymph nodes will be necessary. Understanding the function and location of the lymph nodes is essential for the LMI to determine if the condition is localized or generalized. A localized condition is limited to a part of the carcass or one or two organs or part of the head is affected without any signs indicating the spread of the disease throughout the body. In most cases, trimming off the diseased parts of the carcass or condemning an organ or two is required. In a generalized condition, several internal organs are affected. Many lymph nodes are enlarged and hemorrhagic, clearly indicating disease spreading throughout the entire body. This condition requires total condemnation. Lymph nodes function. Lymph nodes are filters for disease microorganisms and abnormal or toxic chemicals in the tissue fluids of the body. Lymph nodes are among the first tissues to become visibly affected. This is the LMI signal that something is wrong. Different lymph nodes are required to be inspected in different livestock species. Sanitary dressing is defined as killing and processing an animal in a manner that prevents contamination of the carcass and their parts by establishment employees and machinery, including the removal of the hide, feet, head, gastrointestinal tract, and or the internal organs in a manner that produces a safe, meat food product in a sanitary environment. This is probably the most critical element in producing a safe and wholesome product for human consumption. For the purpose of explaining the post-mort inspection in sheep and goat, this set of procedures has been divided in two parts, visceral inspection, and carcass and head inspection. The visceral inspection starts by palpating and observing the esophagus for abnormalities. Esophagus, sheep measles, sister circus obvious. This photo shows a sheep measles lesion on the esophagus of a sheep. Early cysts are clear and fluid-filled structures. Over time, they become hard, calcified nodules in the esophagus, heart, and diaphragm. The affected tissues must be trimmed and condemned. The LMI will observe and palpate the mesenteric lymph nodes looking for signs of abnormalities that would indicate any inflammatory condition. The LMI will observe and palpate the mental fat 
looking for a change of coloration for any signs of abnormalities. The LMIs inspect the esophagus by palpating and observing for any abnormalities, then inspecting the small intestines and the mesenteric lymph nodes for any change that would indicate a localized or generalized condition. And finally, inspect the mental fat also by palpation and observation. The LMI will palpate and observe the surface of the heart, looking for any abnormalities or signs of pericarditis, inflammation of the pericardium, a sac-like structure with the two thin layers surrounding the heart. Heart with the sheep measles, cyst circus is obvious. During the inspection of the heart, lesions of sheep measles were found. Affected hearts must be condemned. When localized, lesions in carcass can be trimmed. When generalized cystocercosis is found in a carcass, making the removal impractical, it results in condemnation of the carcass and viscera. Liver inspection. The LMI will palpate and observe the dorsal and ventral surface of the liver looking for any abnormalities. The LMI must incise the bile duct, express the gallbladder, and observe its contents, ensuring that the bile duct is not blocked by flukes. Liver with a bladder warm, Cisicircus teniculis. The photo on the top shows a balloon-like cyst. They are most commonly attached to the liver, but occasionally to the body wall and diaphragm. On the photo at the bottom, the arrow shows the white scars on the liver surface originating from old calcified cysts. Affected organs must be condemned. Surface to which cysts are attached within the carcass must be trimmed and condemned. Carcass is rarely condemned unless infestation is severe. Liver with abscess. This photo shows a sheep liver with multiple abscesses. If no other organ or parts are affected, trim and condemn the liver and pass the carcass. Liver flukes, physiolosis, are very common in small ruminants, particularly those on pastures known to have access to natural standing water sources. In most cases, the procedure is the removal and condemnation of the liver only, and the carcass can be passed for human consumption. Goat liver with flukes. Differently than the previous slide, this liver is visibly damaged by the infestation of flukes. The antimortem may be normal. When the disease is severe, the animal may be depressed and emaciated, or ictus may be observed. Lungs inspection. The LMI will palpate and observe the dorsal and ventral surface of the lungs, looking for any abnormalities or signs of pneumonia or pleuritis, inflammation of the pleura. The LMI will also palpate and observe the bronchial and mediastinal lymph nodes to look for signs of infection. This photo shows the lungs of a goat affected by melanosis. These jet black deposits are most commonly found in the lungs, kidneys, and spinal cord. Deposits resemble ink splashes. Affected organs must be condemned and carcass passed if not affected.
lungs with a pleuritis. This photo shows signs of pleuritis with the inflammation of the pleura. The pleura is composed of two layers of tissue that separates the lungs from the chest wall. The first photo shows the lung surface of a sheep with evidence of adhesion, formation of scar tissue due to pleuritis. The bottom photo shows the pleural lining of a sheep with evidence of adhesions to the rib cage due to pleuritis. Pleuritis is usually associated with case of pneumonia, and most of the time, clinical signs are observed during the anti-mortem inspection. Lungs with pneumonia. In the top photo, the pneumonia is bilateral, affecting both lungs with extensive pleuritis with evidence of toxemia in the carcass, stiff body and petechiation in the kidneys. Condemnation of both viscera and carcass is required. On the bottom photo, the pneumonia is unilateral, localized with no involvement of lymph nodes, evidence of pleuritis or evidence of toxemia. Lungs must be condemned and carcass will pass for human consumption. Kidneys inspection. During the post-mortem inspection, the LMI will remove the kidneys from the capsules palpate and observe both kidneys at the same time, comparing their size and coloration that could indicate signs of abnormalities. Kidneys with signs of sepsemia, toxemia, petechiation, small red dots in kidneys indicate sepsemia, generalized condition, and leads to condemnation of carcass and viscera. A carcass diagnosed as septicemic is never passed. Kidneys with nephritis. Nephritis is a condition in which the kidneys become inflamed. This inflammation can affect kidney function. These photos show multifocal white nodules in a lab kidney with nephritis and two misshapen kidneys with the multifocal areas of cyst formation. If damage of the kidneys is mild, the lamb or goat may show no signs of illness during anti-mortem inspection. If kidney damage is significant, it can result in loss of appetite, bloating, depression, and as it progresses, the animal becomes unable to stand with a fever, diarrhea, and or death. Carcass and head inspection. Some costume slaughterhouses may keep the kidneys and head attached to the carcass. The LMI performs inspection by palpation and observation of the prefemoral lymph nodes, superficial inguinal or supramammary lymph nodes, popliteal lymph nodes, prescapular lymph nodes shoulder, back, forelegs, neck, and head. These are some of the mandatory post-mortem inspection procedures to ensure that only a safe and wholesome product reach the public. The LMI will palpate and observe for abnormalities at all cut and external surfaces body cavities, abdominal, thoracic, and pelvic canal, 
diaphragm. Delamayo palpate and observe prefemoral lymph nodes, superficial inguinal or supramammary lymph nodes, and popliteal lymph nodes. Bruises. Delamayo observe red brown areas of bruising commonly around hind and front limbs, butt region, and occasionally at the rib cage area. Affected areas must be trimmed off. The antimortem may be normal, or the LMI may observe some limping. Can be the result of long distance transportation, rough handling and movement of animals in pre slaughter stages, or presence of hard animals. Pyemia, abscesses. Pyemia is the presence of blood poisoning, septicemia, caused by the spread in the bloodstream of pus forming bacteria released from multiple abscesses. All carcasses affected with active pyemia must be condemned. During the antimortem, the animal often appears normal or may have poor body condition purulent nasal discharge, signs of respiratory disease. Emaciation is a condition in which the carcass has reached a stage of degeneration due to lack of nutritional input. There is a lack of fat in the carcass and the organs, and residual fat appears watery and jelly-like. The organs may be small and thin. There are many causes of emaciation, and they are always associated with chronic disease. It can be caused by neoplasia, cancer, severe parasitism, physiolosis, or chronic bacterial infection. There will be no normal fat, and the musculature will be moist and glossy. You may see a watery material running down the backbone and dripping off the neck after the carcass is split. Carcass and head inspection. Delemai will palpate and observe prescapular lymph nodes and shoulders. The LMI will lift four legs and observe neck and head. Arthritis and polyarthritis, when several joints are affected. If arthritis localized and there are no sign of systemic illness, affected joints can be removed by trimming then carcass should be passed for human food. If arthritis is found in conjunction with signs of a generalized condition, the carcass must be condemned. Melanosis is very rare in the small ruminants. Condemned carcass with generalized pigmentary deposits. Affected organs may be condemned and carcass pass if carcass is not affected. During anti-mort inspection, there are usually no clinical signs. Dark sclera, the white of the eye, may be observed upon close observation. LMI starts the carcass inspection, palpation
once again the neck area. Antimicrobial spray intervention. The meat poultry neck safety branch recommends this procedure. Lactate, acetic, and citric acids are very effective at the broad spectrum decontamination of red meat surfaces. Lactic acid is the most user friendly, has a pleasant odor, and is less irritating to the skin than the other two. But the microbial spray treatment is a low cost, efficient, and effective method of reducing bacterial contamination on the surface of the red meat carcass, parts, and organs. Reducing bacteria helps keep consumers free from foodborne illness. After performing an effective antimicrobial spray intervention, carcass can be returned to the customer or moved into the chill cooler before fabrication and further processing. Special thanks to everyone whose help was essential in assembling this annual maintenance training material. Islamic Meat and Poultry, UC Davis Meat Lab, Nature's Bounty, Riella Farms, Tuan Wen, <laughs> Dr. Gaitan, Dr. Hejazi, and to all licensed livestock meat inspectors whose professional dedication is fundamental for the customer slaughterhouse to produce a healthy and safe meat for the citizens of California.